Hey everybody, um, time for another toolkit session uh, for NBC Youth Ministry. Um, I have in my hand a, um, a youth team members, members pack, um, which hopefully you have. If you don't, please let me know and I'll get one to you. Um, uh, in it, we've got our youth team commitment, uh, which reminds us of the things that we're trying to do as a team um, here at NBC. Um, and one of the things, um, the goal of our, of our ministry here is um, that our young people will grow in their knowledge of Jesus and their passion for him. And by knowledge, I don't mean just head knowledge. I mean that they, they will grow in their relationship and, their, and how they get to know Jesus and his ways and in their passion for him as well. So that is, that is our goal. And I just want to encourage you because we can't achieve that if that's not what's happening for us as well. So just really encourage you um, uh, in your journey and your walk with Jesus, uh, whatever it is you need to do to fall in love with him more and to get to know him better, do that because that will, um, will help you serve our young people uh, way more um, and help them know what it means to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. Uh, and that's what we want. That's what we want from this ministry. Um, there's a number of things that help us be effective as we work with our young people. Um, we have a bunch of values, um, and and they are built up. They're, they're they're built up. They are represented and summarised in our three statements: build people up, help people grow, because people matter. Um, and we want compassion to motivate our work as well. Uh, with our young people. So those three things, build people up, help people grow, because people matter, they matter. We each matter to God. Um, and that is expressed in so many different ways in how we relate to our young people. Just want to go through one um, uh, simple thing. It's called the self-concept diagram uh, by uh, Professor, Dr. Ha uh, Professor Dr. Hayakawa, Hayakawa um, in one of the um, American universities a few decades ago. Um, this has been a really helpful tool, both for me to understand how I work, um, which then helps me to understand how to help other people. Um, I remember once going on a course called Helping People Grow, it's a five day course, and by day four we were still looking at um, our own stuff and our own selves and how we help ourselves grow and what it means for us to grow. And I was beginning to get a bit frustrated by then because I was like, well, I'm supposed to be here to help others grow. But actually, um, the, ba the main thing that gets in the way of uh, me helping others grow is actually my own stuff, my own things that get in the way. Um, and so the more I can understand what's going on for me and how to manage that and how to be a disciple of Jesus and how to really follow him, uh, the better I can help others. So... Um, we're going to, uh, I'm just going to introduce it to you. Um, to start off with, we have um, Mr. Blobby. Um, and this is representing our real self, who we really are. Okay. Um, and you'll see that it's, it's wibbly wobbly. Um, uh, that's because we are impacted by every significant emotional experience that happens to us, impacts us and changes us, it shapes us. Um, okay, we'll come back to that in a little while. Um, as well as that um, is uh, this other thing here called the self-concept or the self-picture, okay? Um, and this is where, when I say I can or I can't or I am like this or I can I can do this or this is who I am, 90% um, of the time I'm referring to this, this whole section. Okay, so we would say that that is our self-concept or if you prefer our self-picture. This is the way we see ourselves. It's what it's um it's yeah it's the way that we see ourselves, and you'll notice two main things from this. There's stuff that's outside of our real self. So there are things that I believe about myself that are simply not true, okay. And also it is within the real self. So there are things that I believe about myself that are true. Um, however, as you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff about me that is true 
that I'm simply not aware of and I'm not, I'm not including in the picture that I have of myself. Um, so from that place, from this blue house, we'll call it, we look at life, okay? And we might, um, I'll just put life there. We look at life and we might see things as a, um, sorry, you can't see that. We might see things as a threat or an opportunity um, and, and, but we, we, we categorize them as a threat or opportunity based on our picture of ourselves. Okay. Um, and, and we don't, we generally, we, we don't take into account all the other stuff. You'll notice as well that something else is missing from the picture. Okay. Especially as we look at life. So we look at opportunities or threats or whatever. Um, we tend to just come from this. Um, e even if even if we're growing and we're coming from more and more of this, there is still something missing, isn't there? That thing is God, okay? Um, so the problem with this is that it doesn't include God in the picture, okay? So I'm going to just draw here. This is the human spirit here. This represents our human spirit, and that's the part of us that is connected. Um, uh, not with, not to Dr. Hayakawa. Uh, but in fact, <laughs> to God, okay, and he, he sees life, um, and if we are connected to him, and we, we are able to uh, tune into his reality to life, then we will make very different choices and decisions um, to how we, how we would, to the ones we would, if we're just coming from here. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the good news. Let's come back to this bit as well. Um, you remember I said that our real self is impacted by every significant emotional um, uh, uh, circumstance or happening in our lives. Okay, and we have things called bruises. So this can be a really simple example of a bruise is if you're in a car accident, which I was, um, and... Um, uh, what, what's, what's fascinating is you might be in a car accident, you've had to brake suddenly and then there's a big bang, etc, etc. Whenever I come to a place where if I'm driving or whatever, or if I'm a passenger, especially if I'm a passenger, I look up and there are red lights. Even if it's just the back lights, it's not the brake lights, but my brain says, the brake lights, something bad's going to happen. And I, the anxiety, the same anxiety that happened at the moment when that accident happened, is triggered off as well okay so that's that's what a bruise is um, the other thing that you can have uh, well that we all have are deficits and these are like holes in our psyche um, where essentially what's happened is um, we were created to um, to live and to be nurtured in a, a situation of unconditional love and whenever that goes missing there is a deficit, there's something missing within us. Okay, so all of us have this. Now the thing is that we are often unaware, unconscious of this stuff because as we say, it's not part of here, is it? Um, however, even though we're unconscious of it, it actually is impacting us. And so this stuff also comes through and we're unconscious of it. Uh, but it comes through and we actually, it impacts the way we look at life, the way we see things. Okay, so that's a really quick run through of the self-concept diagram and how it works and what it, what, it, um, what it demonstrates. But what does that mean for us and what does that mean for our young people? It means that however well-intentioned we are, there are a whole bunch of things that are impacting us from our past, okay? Um, and they're impacting the way we see life. They're often impacting, in fact, the way we see God himself. Uh, they're certainly impacting the way we see ourselves, okay? Um, and the more that we can, the answer to this stuff is here. The more that we can develop this connection with God, because the answer to all of these is actually in him. The fulfillment of these deficits is from him and from our relationship with him. And so the more that we become aware of this, the more that we bring this stuff before God for healing and wholeness, that then, that then um, uh, uh, deals with, with these things. Okay, 
Um, that's super important. <clears throat> um, the, the, other, um, the other thing to be aware of is that when we're in true fellowship with other people and, and we feel safe, what happens is our, I'll, I'll go through this in another, another um, session, but our little self-concept um, is able to relax and actually we're able to grow a little bit more. I'll go through that in another session. Um, but to take home from this, um, for us, there's a lot of stuff in our past and in our picture of ourselves that impacts how we do life, including how we respond to our young people, okay? Um, and the more that we can invite God into it so that we can actually see through his eyes and see how he sees our young people, he sees the circumstance, he sees us, and we can align ourselves more with that. We can bring this stuff in for healing. Uh, the more whole our responses will be. So I'll just leave that with you um, and, uh, and then do another, another little session on how we can actually help this uh, little self-concept actually grow to include more of who God has made us to be, um, more of our spirit, uh, become more aware of some of this stuff that trips us up. Okay. Thanks heaps. Hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Cheers.